How long are you going to be? I know it's upsetting, Mr. Johnson, but it has to be done. You've been here nearly two hours now. How much longer? As long as it takes, I'm afraid. How are you doing, lads? You don't seriously believe these two are involved in the rape, do you? What I want from them is a complete list of guests. Memory failure? Uh, yeah. I just can't remember. I was out my school. A bit drunk. Help your mate with his, then. Now, Mr. Johnson. Did you find anything amiss in your daughter's bedroom after the incident? As I told one of your people, the bedsheet was missing. You've double-checked. It's not hidden in the wash basket or anywhere else. No, I do the washing. It's missing. Fine. Now, back to the party. Where were you at the time? I was out all night. That's why these two idiots had the party and invited every Tom, Dick and Harry. Yeah, but where were you exactly? I, I was staying with a friend. Can we be a little more precise? Your friend's name and address, for instance. Um, she's... All right, then. No name and address? Uh, look, do I really have to tell you that? The boys can tell you. I was out all night. The lady's name and address, please, Mr. Johnson. Oh, look, there's no point in checking. She's on holiday with her family in Barbados. Until when? Well, the 5th of January. Look, I really don't want to get her in trouble, you know. We still have to check. What can you do on the quiet, I mean, if her husband found out? A name and address, please. What I'd like to do is go through your statement again and see if there's anything else you can remember. Have you arrested anyone yet? We're still continuing our inquiries, Mr Shadwick. You must have someone in the frame. Have you seen everyone from the list of men she gave you? We'll be interviewing them all in due course. Do you happen to know where Harvey lives, Nicky? You know, John Moore's uni with me. I don't really know him that well. I heard Ryan Musgrove's in London. That's a bit convenient, isn't it? Doom on to London. We'll be fetching him back for questioning as soon as we've contacted him. I think you should be giving his father a going over as well. What was he doing at a kid's party, eh? Our Jason said he'd seen him blind drunk, out of his mind. That is enough now, Greg. Yeah, well, nothing seems to be getting done. The longer this goes on, the harder it's going to be to nail him. I know how frustrated you must feel, Mr Shadwick, but we are doing our best. And I'm afraid it can be a slow, painstaking business. Were you on any medication at the time of the party, Nicky? What do you mean? Any tablets or pills prescribed by your doctor? No. Did you take anything prescribed to anyone else in the family? No. Are you trying to say she's on drugs? Did you take a tablet or pill from anyone at the party? I don't do drugs. I hate anything to do with them. Do you think anyone at the party could have slipped a tablet into your drink at any time? You mean... someone drugged me? There were no traces of drugs in your blood or urine samples, but... going on what you've already told us, I'm pretty sure you were under the influence of a powerful sedative. Oh, my God. You were? I was saying she was drugged and then... Oh, God. He gave her drugs. You better get them for this. Whoever did this is a very dangerous man, Nicky. You've got to do your best to remember anything at all. That'll be DS Rose. That's me, Craig. Come on, Nick, try. Please, you don't want this to happen to anyone else, do you? I can't. I'm trying to remember, but it's a total blank. All I know is I felt weird and... Then I remember it was waking up. <laughs> Just take your time and think. There must be something helpful you can remember. Perhaps you can tell us about the missing sheet, Nicky. Did you take it away from the Johnsons? Why did you do that? I felt ashamed. It was stained. So I wrapped it around the contraceptive packet and threw it away. Where did you throw it away? In one of my dad's rubble bags. That's been tipped. Which tip? It's a bit awkward. Awkward? I've got this arrangement with Stevie Dobson. Who... Is that the Dobson from Merce Lane? The biggest cowboy fly tipper in the city. That's very helpful. Well, I didn't know she was going to put up me rubble sacks, did I? Why did she do that? I felt ashamed. It's all right, Nicky. It's vital evidence. 
It'd be a miracle if we find it now. There must be some other way of getting them. Maybe. But we'd be a lot closer if you disposed of your rubbish in a legitimate way. I helped carry up to the bedroom, but I never went back in, and that's the truth. Well, I'm not accusing you, mate. I never even mentioned it in my statement. The guy I don't trust is that taxi driver, Joey Musgrove. Mate, you're joking, aren't you? He was that bad that he couldn't have done anything. Yeah, well, you didn't see him come out of that room fastening his kecks up. Yeah? I've told the missies. And I've told him what he was like at the party. Smarming up to young girls, asking them if they wanted to dance. Who's to say he's not some kind of pervert who gets his kicks out of raping young girls? But I don't know, I mean, rape's an act of violence and control. I mean, it's not about sex, not really. But we don't know him, do we? For all we know, he's a real sickle. He was leathered, he was off his head. I mean, I can't see him raping anyone. I'm telling you. No. My money's on him. No, I'm not Johnny Musgrove. Well, you then? Milky coffee, please, Michael. How's your sister, son? She's still in a bit of a state. Whoever gets done for that one's hanging. That'll put a stop to it. Your dad thinks the same. Jay Strack as it was Joey Musgrove. Him? He wouldn't say boo to a goose, would he? Nah, it wouldn't be him. Yeah, well, you two can think what you like. He's the name of the frame for me. God help whoever it was if Jason's our fella gets hold of him. Yeah, well, you keep out of it, do you hear? Hey, just let them get on with it. Listen, um, I've invited Anthea and Megan out for a meal tonight. Oh, finish your turkey, have you? <laughs> I thought you, uh, thought you might want to come out with us, you know. What, you mean like last time? Nah, that's something I'm definitely keeping out of. Oh, come on, Mike. Megan likes you. <sighs> that's before she found out I was a half-brother. Sorry about that. Mr. Dixon? Yeah? Michael Dixon. No, that's my laddie. I'm Detective Sergeant Rose, Manor Park CID. I believe you were a guest at a party at Number 5 Brookside Close on December the 23rd. Yeah. I'd like you to come down to the station and help us with our inquiries. Hey, hold on, hold on. It wasn't him. My son's no rapist. If you don't mind, Mr. Dixon. No, it's all right, Dad. I'll, I'll come now. We'd also like a look around your flat. What for? For one thing, I want the clothes you were wearing the night of the party. All right, yeah. Hey, son, do you want me to get you the solicitor? Dad, I haven't done anything. If we could, get on. Hey, hang on, son. I'm coming with you. In previous cases, it sometimes happened that some of the details come back gradually. So you've got to keep trying. It'll help enormously. So when are you going to pull that Joey Musgrove in? You know I saw him coming out of that room, fastening himself up. So why haven't you arrested him yet? We need evidence. You give it a rest, neither of you are helping. What more evidence you need than that? A young girl's lying drunk in bed and he comes out doing himself up. God almighty, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to suss that one out, do you? Do you know what he did to her? He slipped the drugs on purpose. He set out to drug her. Then rape her. I knew he was a pervert. Now that is enough, Jason. No, it isn't. You better get him locked up quick. Because if you don't, I'll have him. You'll be second in the queue, sir. You'll do no such thing, either of you. We will be interviewing Mr. Musgrove as soon as possible, along with everyone else. Right now, I suggest you concentrate on using your energies to support Nicky. Please let us know if she remembers anything at all, Mrs Shadwick. I'll be in touch. Cheeky cow. She's dragging her feet and she has the nerve to have a go at me. What are you like? The period? They should be over there nailing Musgrove. You hear that? They need the evidence. Then why don't they get off their idle backsides and get some then? Well, they would do if people like you didn't throw it away. That wasn't my fault. Oh, no. I didn't know, did I? All I know is this could mean someone getting away with what they did to my girl. Just stop it, you're not helping. <laughs> we wouldn't be going through this if she hadn't been so stupid. Why did you have to get drunk? She was drunk, for God's sake. You know what she's like. She's been getting drunk every other day since she started university. If she wasn't drunk, she'd have spotted him slipping her a Mickey Finn. She wasn't that drunk. How do you know? I suppose you were in the same state. I wasn't. You should have been looking after her. <sighs> she's 19. You should have sussed if someone was homing in on her. You should have been wary of Musgrove. <sighs> she was a light flirt that night. She was all over the place. Stop it! And if she was carrying on like some slag, then that's her choice. It's got nothing to do with me. You're saying she was carrying on like a slag? <gasps> Will you shut up the period? You'll be saying to your floor in next. Thank you. Bye. Guess what? Mike's being arrested for that rape. You mean he's helping police with their inquiries because he was at a party where a girl was raped? Ron Foamy, it's just routine. But I let him kiss me. I could have been kissed by a rapist. 
Don't be ridiculous. Mike didn't do it. How do you know? You hardly know him. You hardly don't know any of them. Don't start again, Megan. I don't want you rushing into this stupid marriage. I know exactly what I'm doing. If you got to know Ron a bit better, you might understand. I don't want to know him. I just want both of us out of this crazy situation. Look, Ron's inviting me out to dinner tonight. He asked if you'd like to come as well. After the other week? And that horrible Christmas dinner, you must be joking. It wasn't that bad. It was a nightmare. And Bev Ron's awful. Can't you say she's trying to wear my way back in with Ron? I know where game. If he felt anything for you, he wouldn't have heard around. He's Josh's father. He wants him out of care. And the only way to do that is by Ron getting back with her. If you marry him, she's not going to go away, you know. You never know when she's going to turn up or what he's doing with her. I know Ron, and I know Bev's got no chance. All right, all right. Someone else answer the door. Joseph Musgrove? Yeah, what is it? I'm trying to sleep. Detective Sergeant Rose and D.C. Collins, Manor Park CID. Can we come in? What's it about? You were a guest at a party at number five Brookside Close on December the 23rd. Did you think we were here for something else, Mr. Musgrove? No. <laughs> like what? We'd like you to come down to the station and help us in our inquiries into a serious sexual offence. What has that business got to do with me? If you could just put your shoes and socks on, Mr. Musgrove. I, I've got nothing to do with that. And what about telling my wife? She's our visitor. I can't just go and leave like this. Just get your shoes. And we'll want to look at your wardrobe. What? We'll need to look at your clothes. And the DC here will be taking the clothes you were wearing at the party. They can't wait to get you down here, then they leave you sitting around. Yeah, I'm just made up of not in a cell. Mike, um, is there anything you want to tell me, son? Now, you know, before. They talk to you. For God's sake, that I'm not a rapist. No, no, I know you're not. <laughs> Just had to ask. I knew he did it, you dirty pervert! I hope they throw away the key! You ruined my sister's life, do you hear me, Musgrove? Get back in the house. You better get him down there and knock the tooth out of him, or I'll come and do it! For God's sake, will you get a grip? Go on! He's in the knee like my daughter! I'll kill him! You're a dead man, Musgrove! I'm acting like a madman! I'll tear the scumbag apart! Get in! Now! Where did this button come from? Bedroom where the incident took place. Could be off anything. Checked all Gemma Johnson's clothes, except the one she's got with her at her friends. So, worth a try. Find the shirt with the missing button. So, who's next? Mike Dixon. <laughs> Did they ask you what sort of drugs? No, they just asked if they've seen anyone taking drugs. I hope you kept your gob shut, John. Oh, yes. I wonder if Matt Musgrove got that Nicky shad on it. And went into your Gemma's bedroom with her. Oh, I really don't care. You don't care if you're living in the same street as a pervert. I just wish I'd never had the party. And if my dad finds out we had that stuff. You won't if you keep it shut, will he? Honest, Mr J, it had nothing to do with us. Yeah, so you said at the police station. But we didn't. You was at the party. You let people you don't even know into my house. You just got out of control. He was expecting you on, but we should know better, shouldn't we? Hey, never mind where I was or what I was doing. You let me down. Are you say you're grown up? Will you try behaving like it? Oh, yeah. Get round to the shop and get some work done while I try and get our Gemma's room straight so you can't stay a mate forever. Come on. We've established that you carried Nikki Shadwick to the young girl's bedroom. Did you go in there again? No. Not even to check if she was OK? No. Were you in any of the other bedrooms that night? Er, uh, yeah. Which one? Er, uh, Simbad's. 
alone? I was with Rachel Jordash. For sex? Well, you know. Were there any drugs going around at this party, Michael? Well, I didn't see any. Did anyone talk about spiking drinks? No. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Was Nicky drug raped? What do you know about drug rape? Well, only what I've seen on the telly. And was it a subject of conversation at the party? No. Do you take drugs, Michael? No. Are you sure? A druggie killed my brother in a road accident. You say you wore this on the night of the party? That's right, yeah. Are you absolutely certain? I'm positive. You couldn't be mistaken. That was the shirt, definitely. Have you thrown any shirts away since the party? No. Were you wearing boxer shorts that night? No, I wasn't wearing any boxer shorts. Can you prove that? Have you thrown away any underwear since that night? No. Then how can you prove you weren't wearing any boxer shorts? Would, um, Rachel Jordash know? Yeah, well, she saw me changing earlier on. We worked together and we were just having a little bit of a joke about me undies, like. And, of course, you were together in the bedroom at the party. Yeah, but... You were a young, red-blooded male, Michael. So what happened? Were you still in the mood after Rachel? <sighs> Do you fancy your coffee, Dad? No, sir. Look, why don't you just phone the cop shop and see if he's been charged yet? For God's sake, this is not now Nicky and him. I want to be there when he gets remanded. Don't be soft. He's not the only one that was taken in. Uh, he's the one, though. No worries. Are you going to Katrina's? No, well, she's gone to Elsie's with the mum and dad. Yeah, we'll go for a pint. The Peria. We're fine here. Go for a pint. Well, there is a film I want to see. Greg. I'm not in the mood for a pint, but I'll tell you what, we'll go and have a word with Stevie. See if he can remember where he dumped that sheet. Fahrenheit. Clear sky. I think it's about time you knew how to talk, don't you? I keep telling you, I was drunk. I can't remember. You were seen leaving the girl's bedroom after Nicky Shadwick was put to bed in there. What were you doing in that room? Think, Joey. Look, I'd been at the party a while. I'd had a lot to drink. I was bossed and I went to look for the toilet. But I must have gone into the wrong room. Go on. Look, I didn't realize it wasn't the toilet, not at first. I'd already undone my zip. I was straight out of there when I saw the girl in the bed. Who was it? I don't know. I just left. I think you're lying, Joey. I think you saw Nicky Shadwick lying unconscious and you got on the bed with her. I didn't. Look, you've checked my shorts. I told you I don't recognize that button. Isn't it obvious? It isn't me. That button could have been in the bed for days before the rape. It might have nothing to do with the case at all. It might be simpler than we thought. Middle-aged man goes into bedroom after drinking. Defenceless young woman, scantily clothed, is lying on the bed. He takes advantage of her. Simple as that. You're wrong. I just left the room. Even after commenting on all the young girls, admiring their bottoms, their breasts, their legs. All oh, that was talk, just talk. You didn't mean it. It's just the sort of thing men say. Like rapists. Like men who don't really like women. I'm not like that. How much had you had to drink, Joey? About four cans and some wine at the party. Were you drinking before that? Yeah. For how long? Not long. I just knocked off the text. I hope you weren't driving, Joey. Your license is suspended pending sentence for drink driving. If we catch you at it, that won't go down very well with the magistrates, will it? Never mind your job. Could end up in jail. You're in enough trouble already. Look, I never touched that girl. Honest to God, I didn't! Don't think I believe that, Joey. Your license is suspended. You're on the verge of losing your job on the milk and the cabs. So you try and drown your sorrows. No point going home to the wife for sympathy, eh? Not with that lot between you. So you get almighty drunk. Then you see the girl. It's like a gift, isn't it, Joey? Someone to take it all out on. You get on that bed and abuse that poor girl. You're angry, you're drunk, so you take off her underwear and you rape her, right? No! Yes. You took your chance and you raped her. I didn't. But you were drunk. You keep telling us you can't remember things. 
I know I didn't rape her. Interview suspended at 2.57 p.m. These photographs were taken by a guest at Leo Johnson's party. Can you confirm that that's you in the photographs and that they were taken at the party? Yeah. Can you also confirm that the shirt that you're wearing in the picture is the same one that was taken from your flat this morning? Yes. Right, Michael, you're free to go. That's it, then. If we need any more information, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, anyway. See you. Yeah. No chance. You said everything went straight into the incinerator. Why couldn't you have picked a bag of bricks? Come on. All right, girls. How did my girl? No problems. Eliminated from inquiries. I should think so, and all. Right, I'm off. Yeah, turn off. Gather she wasn't up for the meal, then? I'm afraid not. But never mind all, Megan. The sooner we're married, the sooner she can come to terms with her. Right. Uh, look, if we're going out, shouldn't you knock off work and go home and get ready? We're not in any rush, are we? Well, no, no. I suppose not. Loads of time. I was hoping you were going to say that. Don't you think it's about time we cemented this relationship of ours? Yeah, well, I'd like that. It's been a long time, hasn't it? <laughs> I can still remember. <laughs> You keep saying you can't even remember someone coming on to you. I can't. I was just having a good time. Is that Jerry Musgrave talk to you? I don't know. I can't remember. You know, I was 19 once, you know, babe. I know what it's like. You go to a party, you have too much to drink, the fellas are after you. You know, I've been trapped in a bedroom more than once, but by God, I got myself out of it. Cos I fought them off. Why did they? Cos I don't remember. You don't know how it felt. I just went funny. I couldn't even see properly. And then the next thing, it was the morning after. I can't remember, Mum. Oh, you don't want to remember? Is that it? What do you mean? Well, you told us you've never been with anyone. You told me and your dad you were a virgin. Yeah, and that's the truth. So maybe you got a bit too drunk this time. Went with one of those fellas at the party. You feel a bit ashamed to yourself, so you come up with some cock and bull story about being raped. <laughs> I was raped. I was drugged and raped. Yes, you say that, love, but the police don't know. The blood tests were negative. You even wasted for two days before you told us. You sure that this this drug rape business isn't just an excuse? I don't believe you're being like this. I want the truth, Nicky. And I've told you the truth. I don't know how it happens. I don't know anything. All I know is I woke up in the morning and someone had raped me. <laughs> Babe, someone could be in really serious trouble over this. I mean, one of their men at the party could go to jail. Are you sure you're telling me the truth? Oh, Mum, I don't know. I just don't know anything anymore. <sighs> If you've been affected by rape, whatever the circumstances, there's a Channel 4 information line with sources of support, including specific help for victims of drug rape. The number to ring is 08 456 102 288. Lines are open from now until the end of January and calls will cost no more than 20 pence. That's 08 456 102 288.
a nice greeting. Make you look a bit less disappointed to see me. I'm sorry, Rich. I am pleased to see you, honest. I was just hoping that it was going to be the architect. Well, then, I hope he's dropped a gorgeous oh, architect. He's a shape, but I could kiss her if she shows up. Do you know, she's supposed to find a solution to the foundation problems of the club. Rachel, they are miles behind now. Well, what about the opening? Well, I have got a backup plan, but I still need the building work to get back on schedule. So, how was your Christmas? Are you mum and Ruth okay? Yeah, great. We had a really nice time. Um, and did you think any more about me offer while you were away? You know, about being the manager in here. All right, so you just want someone in here so you can get on with opening up the new club? Well, yeah. So, is it me glad to see it or just another pair of hands? Oh, come on, Rachel. I said I was sorry about keeping the baby a secret and that. Please don't make me... What, make you feel guilty? Well, yeah. And do you? Well, yeah. So, should we start 1999 with a clean sheet? Well, yeah. And a pay rise? Oh, well, yes. <laughs> Come on, let's celebrate with some coffee and loads of croissants and swap the goss. You're making a big mistake. My boys wouldn't do anything to anyone. They're good lads. Don't worry, Ma. It's gonna be OK. We haven't arrested them, Mrs Musgrove. We only want to question them at the moment. And your other son is being brought back from the contact address you gave us last night. I thought you just wanted to talk to him. We do, in Manor Park Station. They'll all be helping us with our inquiries. Yeah, but you're wasting your time. They haven't done anything. What about my husband? He's still helping. I know the words. He hasn't done anything either. He was at the party, as these were. Now, as your youngest is only 17, we need an appropriate adult to be with him during the interview. As we're also interviewing your husband, do you want to be present or nominate someone else? We can, of course, call upon a social worker who... No, no, look, I'll be there. We won't start till you get there. I hope your daughter realises what she's doing to my men. Yeah, go on. Never mind hiding, eh? You get her on the phone and tell this lot they've made a mistake. Come on, get in the car, babe. Dad, do you mind having the new car? How do you mean? Before it starts at Heathbank, he has a brand new car. Have you got this one, Cosme? Hey, your education is far more important than the red car I drive. Anyway, better than the Alvan, isn't it? It's fair, so. <laughs> All right, what are you doing up? Oh, um, I thought I'd give you a Leo and Aunt at the old sale, isn't it? It's very good of you, Timothy, considering you worked till late last night. And what are you after? I was hoping to get a bit of time off at lunch. I've got something on. Oh, so for helping me carry a few boxes, you want to go missing at the busiest time of the day? Well, I wouldn't ask if it wasn't important, honest. Yeah, well, I see how busy we are, but I'm not promising anything. Hey, about time and all. Get in the car, will you? It won't be a minute. What are you doing up so early? Planning lunch. You what? You know them two dead fit girls from the new estate? Come and chippy again last night. But did you talk to them? Well, I've only arranged to meet them in Barbrookie for lunch. Oh, the kid for you, making lunch dates. Who do you think you are? Oh, I just thought I was the person who's, um, copped you off with a horny six for me. Oh, yes, my meeting them as well. Well, that's if your dad gives us the time off. Oh, after the party and all that. Doubt he'd be doing either of us any favours. Especially after what happened in Adrian. Yeah, but we're in the clear for that. Yeah, but what about what Matt was up to? He's only having a smoke. Yeah, and what are the busies looking for? Someone who drugged and raped Nicky Shadwick. Now, if they sussed that he was smoking pot, they'd be asking all kinds of questions. Yeah, but that had nothing to do with us. Yeah, it's still horrible, though, isn't it? Knowing that someone who was an arse did that to Nicky. Yeah, whoever he was deserves slamming everywhere. Who deserves slamming everywhere? Oh, uh, the local rapist. Yeah, well, let's leave it to the police, eh? Unless you know something they should know. Yeah, uh, no. Nothing. See that Lindsay Corkle's going off to the Simpsons? She likes the ensuite bathroom. I did look at it myself, but you know, with the extension your father's put on, there's not much scope for improvement. You know, push the resale value up. Not like this place. Yeah, love. Do you want anything else? No, it's all on. OK, thanks. Maybe you do, I'll be in the bedroom. The house isn't that big. I know. You know what I mean. And you didn't have to stay off work all day just because of me, you know. I don't mind. Anyway, stop your father from going on about how much I'm never here. Although he'll probably regret it when he sees the list of jobs I've drawn up for him. That one across the road. Did she upset you before? She didn't mean anything. She's just upset about her sons. <sighs> just hope it wasn't them, Mum. I couldn't bear the thought of finding out it was someone that I knew. Look, Nick, 
I know this is difficult, babe, but... Mother, I'm not making anything up. I've had enough grief off you and my dad in the past to be able to cope with an ear bashing for getting legless and... jumping into bed with... But I didn't. I didn't choose to do anything. I was drugged and raped, OK? I don't know by you, but I was. So, at the time of the alleged assault, you can't say exactly whereabouts you were in the house, or what you were doing, or who you were with. It was a party. You don't exactly keep a check on your watch. I was just standing around enjoying myself. But you can't remember who with? The other people at the party. Including Nicky Shadwick? I saw her there, but I, I didn't spend much time with her. You spent some time with her? I don't, I don't know. Thank you, Mr. Musgrove, for now. Does that mean he can go now? That was Mrs. Musgrove, the interviewee's mother. Not just yet. I want to speak to your brothers, then I'll be coming back to you. Interview suspended at 10.31 a.m. I just hope for your sake they have better recollection of where you all were and who you were with, or I might consider pressing charges against you. There you go, mate. Cheers. So how was your Christmas then? Quiet. How about yours? Well, apart from being out for questioning for rape, it was all right, I suppose. I can't believe it when Jackie told me about poor Nicky. Scary to think we're all in the same house when it happened. Well, not as scary as the police accusing you of doing it. No, you poor thing. So do they know it wasn't you now? Yeah, I think other people's statements have put me in the clear. I wonder if they want to interview me. Think I should contact them? No, I'd wait for them to get in touch with you. So, what made you decide to take the manager's job then? Well, I spoke to my mum about it. I told her about what happened with Jackie and everything, and she reminded me of all the secrets we had to keep about my dad. Well, I don't think Jackie's was as bad as that. And I know Ed and Katie felt last they were trying to tell the both of us. But it's done now, Rach, and Jackie's made up you back here. Yeah, so am I. Do you know what she's planning to do for the opening of the new club if the building's not ready? <sighs> I only work here. But listen, we need to have a chat, you know. Yeah, well, let's not start rushing into anything we might regret. I still want us to be mates, even if things don't work out. Well, yeah, OK, Rach, but let's get away from here sometime this week. Maybe we can have a proper talk. OK. Hey, what can I get you? I hope you've got a better memory than your brother. His recollection of the party is very vague. Or has he just got something to hide? It wasn't our mat, OK? So you can let him go. You know that for certain, do you? Yeah. Is that because you were with him, or because it was you who carried out the attack? <sighs> Alleged attack. Look, I just know he wasn't there. Or maybe you both took part. No. Then you could just be covering for him. And I'm sure when I interview your other brother, Ryan, he'll tell me it wasn't any of you either. Well, you can't change the truth. I've been in this game long enough to know a few people who disagree with you on that. How come you and your mother are Irish and your brother's a Scouse? We got lucky. Where were you born? If I say hospital, will I lose a few points? Liverpool. And you grew up in Ireland? You've done this before, haven't you? What about you? Have you done this before? No. I've done nothing. Neither has Ryan and neither has Matt. Not even drugs? You'll know our Matt has a record, right? I know he's been cautioned, yeah. Well, think about why he's being so vague. You tell me. Teenage party? His reluctance to tell you where he was? Especially with my ma sitting right next to him. So he was smoking a joint or two. Well, one of you had better tell me, cos at the moment he could be in line for a rape charge unless he can come up with an alibi. He was outside with them two lads, Leo and Binhead, Tinhead or something. He works in a local chippy. That'll be Leo Johnson and Timothy O'Leary. Right. Well, they're going to have to come back in. So I hope for your brother's sake, their memory hasn't been frazzled by smoking illicit substances. Oh, you're not going to do them for it, are you? Or, or tell me ma. My only concern at the moment is finding out who drugged and raped Nicky Shadwick. Which brings us on to you. Yeah. Well, it wasn't me. Well, why does that not surprise me? The only time anybody ever holds their hands up and gives a full unprompted confession is on the bill when they're running out of time. I don't expect you or any of the other people I interview to own up, because I know that the sick individual that used that young girl for his own perverted pleasure would never make life easier for anyone. So I'm resigned to having to work extra hard on this case. But I don't mind, you see, because I've got a daughter the same age. And I know that it could quite easily happen to my girl or any of her friends. It wasn't me. 
Were you ever alone with Nikki? No. She crashed out in the bedroom. And did you go into that bedroom? No. Don't worry. I'll be checking. All right, Pops. How's the life of leisure now that you're not working in the garage? It'd be a lot better if I didn't have this Bev and Anthea business hanging over me. Why? Right, what's happening now? Anthea's getting all paranoid about Bev hanging around. Well, look, you're going to have to sort this out. You can't keep splitting your time between the pair of them. One of them's going to end up disappointed. Thanks. Rachel, not only is the architect not turned up, but now the builders say there's been a delay with the shipment of steel they were expecting. Well, what are you going to do? Well, God knows, but now you're back, you can help me with the plans for the opening. But if you ain't got a building? Hey, I've got half a building and a very good imagination. Come on, I'll show you. Mike, we're going over to the club, you're in charge. What's going on? Hey, give them a few hours and you'll be looking at the Millennium Marquee. You're wasting your time for this as well, mate? Yeah, yeah. Well, at least they haven't dragged you all the way back from London. For no reason whatsoever. Come on, please. Which bit is this? Ah, wait and see. Church hall, so spa, pool, gym up there, and the main entrance will be out through there. Then you'll come in and go straight across to the nightclub, use the salon from the restaurant, and back this way for all this. Oh, it's fabulous! It will be when it's finished. I'm gonna have all the chairs and tables and stuff down the windows. But what about the tent? Well, that'll connect up to where the main door will be. So on Thursday, they'll all get something to eat and drink, and they'll come in and take a look at all this. It's not just an opening, it's an outer launch party. Brilliant! I wanted to bring these around, see how Nikki's doing. Who are you, Mike? Harvey. We got to uni together. You at that party? Yeah. Well, what are you doing around here? Cos you're under suspicion, just like everyone else. I didn't do it. Oh, so the police have ruled you out for deafness? Well, no, I mean, they said they might want to speak to me again, but... Well, I don't think you should be here, do you? Well, what's going on? Him. He's just leaving. I wanted to call around and see how you were. And tell her it wasn't me. Yeah, and I've told him to do one, cos nobody is coming anywhere near you until the police find out who's responsible. Nikki, tell her, please, it wasn't me. She doesn't know who it was, because they'd be in jail by now. So I'm telling you, do one, or I'll call the police. Come on, please, come on. No, Nikki! You can't go talking to one of the suspects. The police would go mad. And you should have known Bessie. I just told you it wasn't me. Look, lad, do one and take your flowers with you. I'm sorry, love, but until the police find out who's responsible, you know, you can't go talking to those suspects, even if you don't think it's any of them. So you believe me now, do you? Of course I do. I just... Oh, babe, I just had to be sure. Why? I'm not one of your union cases, you know, where you've got to listen to both sides. It's me, your daughter. No, love, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just feel so helpless, knowing it could be anyone. <laughs> The Musgroves, my no, dick isn't even it. I know. <laughs> Any of them could have done it. <laughs> so what's it like? Fabulous. Where's Mrs Chipperfield, then? All right, then, Mrs Smart. You know, circuses, tent outs, mm. I'll never mind. She's still out there, is she? Yeah, Thursday night sounds like a really good night. Yeah, out there, but me and you will be in here. <laughs> Welcome to the management class, love. Organising all the fun for everyone else. Can you see them? Oh, you know girls are like. They're always late. Hey, can you smell chips on me? Oh, you got changed, didn't you? Yeah, but by the time your dad let me off, didn't have enough time to get a shower, did I? Hey, read this. We can order some wine and pate. Oh, make it look like you're dead sophisticated, man. Here they are. Oh. I want a word with you two. 
What? I've just had the police on the phone wanting to ask you two questions about smoking gear at the party last week. Uh, yeah, but we're meeting them. We're down at the station right now, so we're going to go there. And on the way this time, you're going to tell me the whole truth. Or when we get back, I'm going to deep fry the pair of you. Now, move it. Right. Fancy walking down the shops, babe? Bit of fresh air. You mean face up to people? It has to be done sooner or later, babe. Later sounds good. Later always will. You know, you can't let this make you a prisoner in your own home. It's whoever did it needs locking up, babe, not you. Oh, go on. To be honest, I could do with getting out myself. I could also do with getting away with how much your father hasn't finished around here. We're not exactly going to win Garden of the Year for that lot, are we? Oh, come on, what you reckon? Give your poor old mum a break before she gets herself into a larder and then none of us will get any peace tonight. I'll see you, OK? I don't fancy that, thanks. What's wrong with you? It's not like you to leave your scrum. Yeah, and I'm still worried about what to do over Anthea and Bev. Well, I thought you were into Anthea. Well, I am, but I still think a lot of Bev. And I feel responsible about what happened to her. And I want to help with Josh's upbringing. That's what makes it so hard to choose. Well, just choose which one's got the most to offer and who makes you the happiest. Oh, yeah. How do we do that, like? No. OK, just imagine you had to pick one of them to go to a really posh do. Who would it be? Well, Anthea, I suppose. We get on brilliantly. She's good company. We're the same age group, same interests, and she wouldn't make a show of me. Right, OK. And what about the sex? Michael! Well, it's an important part of all relationships. Well, me and Bev always went well together in that department, Mike. Yeah, all right, Dad. Spare me the details. Right. What about taking care of you in your old age? Well, I suppose Bev would shade that one and all, with her being younger. Well, it looks like Bev's got the edge, then. But the only way you're going to be able to really decide is which one of them would you miss most if they both dumped you? They probably both will, No, my luck. Anyway, whatever you decide, you better do it quick or you will lose both of them. I mean, the more you keep stringing Bev along, the harder it'll be to get rid of her. I mean, it's not as if you've slept with her. All you've done is help her out. Why should I believe you and your brothers when the three of you swear that none of you were involved? Well, have you got anything to suggest that any of us were? You were all present at the party. That's enough. A lot of other lads were there, too. Yes. But of all those present, I've got to ask who could possibly have access to the type of substance used on Nicky Shadwick? A substance that isn't widely used in Liverpool, never mind Manor Park. So, because I work away from home, I'm chief suspect? Yeah, higher on the list than the kid who works in the chippy, let's put it that way. No, I appreciate that a box of voluminous condoms might go down well at this time of the year. But I was thinking more of a healthy lifestyle gift than a sex toy. So can we just stick to the hand cream and the facial spray packs, thanks? OK, bye. What's that? <sighs> the PR company's idea of a freebie goodie bag at the launch party, the Wallies. So is everything sorted, then? Yeah, uh, tent, table, chairs, food, drink and celebs. Oh, who's coming? Ah, we can see. Yeah, well, that's just it. Will I be able to? What? Well, is that why you really want to meet me here? So I'd be stuck in this place and you'd be out enjoying yourself over there? Well, as I said this morning, well, yeah. So I won't be able to go to the lunch party at all? <sighs> Rach, what do you want? Do you want to take on the responsibility or keep working as a waitress? Which you could easily do on Thursday night if you want. Or come over when this place closes, which is when the fun will really begin. Is that my first lesson in management? <laughs> take it how you want, but please just take it and go with the flow. OK, I won't be a prat in future. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Hello. Oh, the builder wants to come to the party too now, does he? Well, tell him I wouldn't be having it in a flame and tent if he got his act together. So he can come to the one in the building I'm paying him to build. See ya. Lesson two. I wonder what Leon Chen had brought to you before for a mix of bones to like that. I'll try and find out when I see Sinbad later. 
He's not back, is he? Yeah, he came back early. Well, not according to Mick. I spoke to him this morning, he said he wasn't expecting him back for a few days. Well, I was still in Bristol when he left. He said he was feeling a bit left out. My mum and Brian and a new fellow were getting on really well. I know Ruth really likes him. Oh, I felt terrible. I asked him I'd stay, but he wouldn't. And so where do you reckon he is? Oh, I don't know. I can't believe he could be so stupid. What didn't you play now? Dad, he said you ain't gonna take it any further. Yeah, but they've got you down as mixing with dope heads now. We didn't do anything. And do you think they believe that? And they're not charging us with anything, are they? No, not this time. But now your cards are marked. After you both swore to him that you told the truth. Dad, everything we said was the truth, honest. You just forgot to mention about the drug taking, that's all. But I'm 18, you know. Yeah, I'm living under my roof. I'll get back to the car, the both of us. I haven't finished with you yet, not by a long way. Well, it looks like it's gonna rain. No, come on. We're only going around the shops. Come on, babe. If you don't mind, I think you're best to and clear of us. I was only showing a bit of concern for her. But we don't want anyone's concern. <sighs> Listen, we haven't done anything wrong. We're very sorry for what's happened, but it was nothing to do with any of us. Yeah, well, that's for the police to decide, isn't it? Look, we've been down the police station all day and they haven't charged any of us. And you think that compares to what our poor Nicky's been through? Hey! Do you? Come on, come on. Hey! Please, Mum. Boys, why have you been so long? Everything's all right, Mum. So they ruled you both out now? <sighs> what about you? Yeah, hopefully. Come on, let's get in. Come on, inside. Affected by a rape, whatever the circumstances, there's a Channel 4 information line with sources of support, including specific help for victims of drug rape. The number to ring is 08456 102 288. Lines are open from now until the end of January, and calls will cost no more than 20 pence. That's 08456 102 288. Sorry, but that's not my problem. You know, you were recommended to me by a business associate. I think twice about using me in the future. Yes, I know it's New Year's Eve, like you've known it for three months. It's the 31st of December, the same as it is every year. You know, the date we agreed. An hour. I know, I know, it's New Year's Eve. Yeah, Happy New Year to you too. Well, the PR company haven't finished doing the goodie bags yet. Oh, no. But we can pick them up in an hour. Oh. Do you know, why can't people just deliver what they promise these days? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how's the food going? Everything set? Uh, we're getting there. There's a postcard from Katie in the Seychelles. Oh, mm. best of luck for the big opening. Lots of love, <laughs> Katie. Oh. Susanna, only four hours to go. <laughs> oh, I hope everything's gonna be all right. Oh, it will be. I really <laughs> hope so. You look great, love. Pity you don't feel it. Yeah, well. 
You know, I've probably lost my new job because of that little slag across the way. Oh, Ryan, don't be like that. It's a terrible thing that happened to that poor wee girl. <laughs> poor wee girl. Yeah. She was asking for it, the little slag. Ryan! Oh, what? I should have seen the state of her. Half dressed, drunk, flaunting everything she got. A teaser, that's what she is. And when someone takes her up on it, she starts screaming rape. I don't think that's necessary, Ryan. Yeah, well, you didn't see her. Oh, no, but you can't go around saying things like that. Oh, she deserved it, Mum. Now, that's an awful thing to say. I don't care. She's messed my life up getting me dragged back up here, the stupid little tart. Have you been to see how your jacket's getting on? Yeah, I've just taken the last boxes of free champagne over. It's chaos over there. Hiya. So what's that me going to a big launch party tonight? I'm not. Come on, you've got to. I don't want to. Why not? Our Jackie's going to be choked. This is the dicko's biggest ever event. I'm not a dicko, am I? Yeah, but my dad and Andy will probably be getting it together, won't he? I don't want that either. But he's your dad. He might be, but I don't feel anything for him. And I don't want my mum getting hurt. And how's she going to get hurt? Am I the only one that can see it? Bev wants your dad back. If Ron marries my mum, she's not going to go away, is she? So your dad should get back together with Bev. Yeah, but she's too young. That doesn't matter. You should forget about my mum and concentrate on Bev and his little boy. Well, it isn't as simple as that, Josh. Well, isn't as simple. Are you going to the party tonight? Eh, uh, no. I'll have to go. What did I say? No, it's not you, Reg. She just doesn't want anything to do with our family. Oh, it's not because of what happened to Nikki Shadwick, is it? You're getting taken in and that. No, she just doesn't want me dad and Auntie getting it together. She reckons Bev should get back with him, you know, just for the sake of Josh. Mm, I suppose she might have a point. Eh? Well, Josh is in a foster home, isn't he? If your dad got back with Bev, she'd get him back. I reckon we should have a few pints of bar brookie and then check out the launch at that new club. I thought you said it was invitation only. I am the lifeguard at the pool, you know. Cha-ching! <laughs> <laughs> nah, let's just go straight into town. It's early. We can check out town later. Why don't you and me dad come? What'd you say, dad? What? No, I don't think so. Your dad will be in the taxis, eh? Busy night tonight. Why don't you come on your own, then? No, I really don't think so, love. Anyway, you know, money's a wee bit tight and all. Don't worry about that. We'll stand you a few drinks. <laughs> Go on. Have yourselves a good time. Happy New Year. <laughs> Go on. Marvellous, aren't they? Go on as if they haven't got a care in the world. I wish I could go back to that. Huh. Don't we all? What's on your mind? Ryan. Why? Oh, the police had him for an awful long time yesterday. Sure, they had me for five hours. Yeah, I know, Joey, but... I'm still really worried about him. Yeah, he did slip off to London quick enough, didn't he? What's that meant to mean? Well, he comes home for Christmas, then all of a sudden, he's gone. He wouldn't. All I'm saying is, as soon as this business with the Shadwick girl blew up, he was gone. No, you don't know him. That's all. Neither of us know him. He lives away. We don't know what kind of people he hangs out with. We don't know if he's taking drugs. What if he did do it? I know him. Look, all I'm saying is, he could have done it. How would we know? Oh, Joey, go to work, will you? You'd be better off earning some money rather than calling your own son a rapist. I'm not working tonight. It's New Year's Eve, the busiest night of the year. Or had you forgotten that we need the money? And I'm knackered, right? Exhausted, OK? I've been knocking myself out of work a night and day for months. I've had enough. To hell with the spewing drunk. Someone else can look after them. I'm going to bed. Ah, oh, Joey! Roy, could you make sure that those freebie goodie bags are out in here as well when you get here? Buenas noches, senorita! Oh, hi. 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 About two hours ago, wasn't it? Couldn't wait to get down here and see what was happening. It's fantastic. Oh, fine. Absolutely unscheduled. So, how was Tenerife? Oh, it was brilliant, wasn't it? Our right? second honeymoon. Oh, you'd be ready for some hard work then. Oh, looks like you two have been mad busy. That's it. Fantastic. Oh, everything looks brilliant. So, what do you want us to do? Well, I need some flies put out on all the tables. Could you do that, Peter? No problem. There's a membership application with the health and nightclub on each one. We've got to get as many punts as we can signed off. They're in the office over at the bar. I'm on the way. See you later. <laughs> Um, listen, I'm having a security briefing with the dorm, Eliza. You could be in on that if you like. Great. 
Uh, I'll be with you soon, lads. Go over to Bar Brook and get yourself something to drink and non alcoholic. <laughs> Excuse me, I just want to phone Jesse, check on Harry. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I could do with a fortnight and ten a week myself after the last few days. It's been mad, but we're just about there. All we need now is the punters. Do you know if um, Barry's going to be coming up? Uh, no, he can't make it. He's gone to Florida with his wife and kids. But I tell you what, we won't know what he's missed. Oh, well, it's just down to the three of us then, isn't it? And Peter. <laughs> yeah, it certainly is. Win or lose. I thought you were tired. I can't sleep. So you're going to go to work then? Soft work. I'm going for a drink. No, Joey, please. I'm just going to have enough to get me to sleep. Oh, Joey, the last time you went drinking, you ended up at some kid's party making a holy show of yourself. Cop yourself on, will you? I'm just having a few drinks. Joey, I'm not stupid. The boys told me you were carrying on like some kid, showing yourself up in front of the neighbours. Ah, forget about the neighbours, will you? I'm going out. Just stay there. Hello? Yeah, who is it? Hold on. It's for you. Benny from work. Hey, oh, you were sending someone over with a box of till rolls. Oh, I'm sorry, Jack. I'll see you later, girls. Ten minutes ago, I phoned. Yeah, but we're busy in here as well, you know. Oh, yeah, it looks like it. Here, yeah, these passes will get you past the barn, so when you come over later on. Unless you think of um, fetching someone else. No, not them, they're last year's model. Are you still interested in Rachel? Yeah, but she's not. It all got a bit heavy at the party at McJano's. Since then, she's given me the cold shoulder. Well, makes a change for you to be dumped, eh? <laughs> yeah. Mind you, I wish me dad was as good at dumping women as you usually are. Why? Well, haven't you seen him and Bev together? She flusses her eyelashes and he jumps. He lands in between the sheets with her if he doesn't watch out. Don't you think we'd actually get back together with Bev? I mean, just for Josh's sake. That's what Megan reckons, anyway. Well, why is she sticking on nose then? I'll put her straight off to when I see her. No, she's not coming to the launch. She doesn't want anything to do with us. Well, she can please herself. But I'm not having my dad getting mixed up with Bev again just because Megan's interfering. <laughs> see you, Lisa. OK, I'll do it. I'm going to work. Benny expects you to do a shift for him. So why don't you tell him to get lost? I thought you wanted me to make money. I thought that's all I'm good for. Don't wait up. Happy New Year. <sighs> and why are you so narky? Three months in the Caribbean's a lot to lose over some slapper. I mean, I suffer because she's putting it about at a party. Hey, there was a few there like that. But, I mean, she was begging for it, wasn't she? She had you swinging by your toe. All I'm saying is that there was a few of them there at their heads. You could have had any of them. Hiya. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, I was just wondering... If I could take care tonight. I was just wondering if you'd heard anything from Mr Sweeney. It's better if you'd seen him. Not since he went away for Crimbo, no. Why? Oh, nothing, really. I just thought he'd be back by now. <laughs> It's quite tasty here, isn't she? You've no chance. She was well into the barman at the party. Oh, so was that university creep, Smarmy Harvey. Hey, do you reckon he's the one who did it? Well, none of us did it, did we? Well, as it's New Year, Michael, I think I'll have a wee dram of Scottish wine. Are you going to the launch later? Yeah, I'll nip in and wish our Jackie all the best, and I'm going round to Anthea's to let the New Year in. I don't know what Bev's doing, do you? Yeah, she's out seeing some mates. I did offer to buy a drink now and our Jackie's, but uh, she said she wasn't up to it. Have you decided what you're going to do yet? Anthea or Bev? No rush, Michael, no rush. <laughs> it's New Year's Eve. Jason, I had all this off my mum and dad before. I don't want to go out. But you can't stay on New Year's Eve. What do you want me to do, then? I think in the new year, no, it's as good as the last one. You'll be fine, Nick. You'll be with us. No. Do you really want to stay with mum and dad and anyone else they find in St Andrew's Club? Doing the okey cokey with the Darby and Jones? I'll just go to bed. Oh, come on, Nick. They've even got celebs standing up at this, too. Hey, you might even cop off. What? Haven't you got a zit to squeeze or something? In the bedroom. <sighs> right. At least it's trying, eh? We'll talk about Mr Diplomacy. Are you sure you won't come, Nick? I've got your nan lined up to look after Harry, so we can all use the tickets his Anna gave me. It's invite only, you know. 
Oh, come on. Doesn't make any sense you're staying in. You've been stuck in here for days. Go on out, mate. I'll be trying to get over it. Are you sure you don't mind me being a gooseberry? We wouldn't ask if we did. Come on. Just give it a go, eh? I won't leave your side for a minute. And if it gets too heavy, we can come straight back. Are you sure? <sighs> come on, let's go and find you something lovely to wear. on every seat. <laughs> Don't I know you from somewhere? I do. Go on, get out. Hey, 15 minutes to go. Is everything OK? Fingers crossed. <laughs> I'm telling you to leave now. You can go quietly, or I'll get the police down here to go through your life story. Got it? <laughs> Worried what Alistair Finnegan might say? I'll tell him, happy hogmanay from Lindsay. Tell Rose I hope the baby's okay. Now get out! Let's make sure they don't get in later, okay? Three, four, test them. One, two, two. Lindsay, two, what do you think you're two. playing at? We need them, Dorman. Not them, you don't. One of them's not licensed for a start, and the other two work for Rose Finnegan. Do you think that's a coincidence? Sent to spy on us, you mean? <sighs> yeah, something like that. Right, do you want me to sort out the replacements? Um, yeah, and um, Tom Marksland's. This must be gay. All the elves, no women. You're just on revenge, sir, because you didn't give her the bike when you were seven. Look, here's the key to the side door of the garage. I'll see it in there. Mum? Mum, he's gone. <laughs> Are you OK? So thanks for coming, Dave. If there's anything you need, just let me know. But just don't ask for me support as a hybrid on the night. I'm a loyal red, I'm afraid. Hey, David! <laughs> David! Happy New Year, mate. All the best! Hey, um, can I have your autograph, please? Sure. Thanks, Dad. Oh, Jackie, love. Listen, if I don't see you, all the very best. Happy New Year. Uh, well, you're not going already, are you, Dad? Yeah, well, I've got to, you see. I'm meant to be doing a lump of coal routine round the Anthea's. Oh, can't you phone and ask her to come down? I can't, love. She's got a load of mates and neighbours coming round. Hey, you never know. Maybe Bev will come in and keep you company. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she needn't bother. Dad, I don't know why she's still hanging around. It's New Year tomorrow. Why do we give her the elbow? Jackie, I can't do that, love. What about little Josh? Dad, but he's not your responsibility, and she is nothing to you. I can't just tell her to do you're just playing it off against Anthea, aren't you? No. Months and months of being on your own, and now you've got two of them almost fighting over you. Dad, give Bev the elbow before she gives you any more grief. Jackie, my wonderful caring daughter, I've got to go now. Give me a kiss. Dad. Give us a kiss. <sighs> Happy New Year. There you go. Ta -da. See ya. It's nice New Year, isn't it? It will be when it's all finished. Don't you think, Nicky? Yeah. Now and now we're having hand nice, eh? <laughs> Mike! Your sister's gonna be mental when she gets this place going. Yeah, well, she reckons she is, yeah. Hiya. Hi. Have you still had a good crimbo? Um. What do you think? Uh, can I get you guys a drink? We're fine, thanks. How are you, Nikki? I'm all right. You just started your second term at uni, haven't you? Yeah. Hey, uh, you go and have a dance? Yeah, I've got to go and check on that Jackie anyway, so I'll catch up with you later, yeah? Thanks, I'll see you later, Mike. What are you doing asking him to come and sit with us? Think how Nicky feels. He might be the one. He's been cleared by the police. Yeah, but how do I know for sure it wasn't him? Exactly. The police say he's being cleared, but how do they know for sure? There was no real evidence, was there? I'm oh, sorry, Nicky. Well, don't ask him to come sit with us again. I think I just saw the Harvey fella, the one who's at our uni. That idiot. Where? I can't see him. Well, even if he is in here, he can't harm you, Nick. Well, Mum, that, that's all mad. None of us would do anything like that. No one. 
and all of it's just, you know, with everyone constantly getting at you and everything, it just wears you down. Not you. You're stronger than all of us. <laughs> Am I not? Oh, yeah. If we had the tag wrestler match, I'd want you on my set. <laughs> Where'd you get all this blarney from, I wonder? Well, it doesn't come from Grandad, does it? You're a good lad, Matt. But you promised me. You swear you had nothing to do with what went on. Mum, well, I swear. Besides, anyway, I thought I was too young to understand all that sex stuff. <laughs> what about drugs? Are you old enough to have learnt from the last time? That'd be Bosco. He probably thinks I've been kidnapped by Santa or something. Don't let him see me like this. No problems, I'll go on to. <laughs> see you next year. Okay. Matt? Thanks for listening, love. Take your side and ask you again. Well, and I hope that's the last of them. Yeah. Right. Time to take the rubbish out, Rory. Um, what was all that about? Some divvy trying to sell these. Well, shouldn't we phone the police? No, we don't need police attention. Not on launch night. Oh yeah, you're right. Well, do you want me to flush them? No. No, I'll see to it. Oh, okay. Oh, you big soft kids. How's our head of security getting on? Loving every minute of it. Any problems? Everything's fine. What, do you want paint? Yeah, I do. All right. All right. What's that? Uh, what are you doing here? Just checking it out. Yeah. Well, not with us, you know. Fancy a dance, gorgeous. Sorry, not while I'm working. <laughs> well, there's dedication for you. Listen, love, there's a dance floor full of lovely girls. You can take your pick. No contest. Oh, no. Don't you wish you were back in Tenerife? I do, but I'm glad you're back. This place is going to be the making of us, too. A dance laser, eh? Deal. Fancy a dance, Rich? Well, I just got back from your honeymoon. Come on, me missus said it's all right. Come on. Well, that's all right, then. Show me the body. I'll stay with her if you want to go and speak to Mike or something. Are you okay? Yeah, as long as you're back here by the night. That. There's that drunken little cow that got the coppers to drag me back from London. Don't start, man. I'm supposed to be starting a job here. Oh, God. Nicky, what is it? The most grocery, yeah? Yeah, well, she cost me money and probably lost me my new job. All three of them. Just ignore them, Nicky. You won't get me. Back off, let's go. Ah, did you enjoy wrecking our Christmas, did you, eh? Leave her alone. I'm talking to you, you little slag. Did you hear me? You cost me a job, do you know that? And all because you were too drunk to know you were screwed. Leave her, Ryan. Right? Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. I said leave her, didn't I? I don't like the look of you one little bit. So you look a bit the wrong way ever, and I'll make sure you live to regret it. Understood? Is he the one, Nicky? Is he? Don't know. Just try and remember, because if it's him, will get the police. Yes. Get out, all of yous. And take those two with you. That is a dirty kid's got a Ten seconds going to go midnight. Right, come on. It's midnight. Ten, nine, come in eight, seven, Have I got to celebrate? Five, four, three, two, one.
Poor Nicky. How awful for her. Oh, that looks good. That looks even better. <laughs> hey, well, the chemicals and how many times? Who cares? <laughs> Where's Peter? Who cares? <laughs> Last time I saw him, he was sitting with a band. Oh, good. Well, well done, Jack. And good night. 279. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> okay, 279 applications in all this. <laughs> Here's to our head of security. And here's to the Nosh. Brilliant. <laughs> and here's to us all. Oh. Happy New Year. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year. Coming up next, a real psychological boost for the new year. It's Frasier Night on 4, including interviews with the cast, Kelsey Grammer's favourite episode, and there's still time to vote for your favourite Frasier. Details follow in a moment. I haven't seen that tow rag Ryan Musgrove since he frightened you. I know it's him. You don't, Dad. I can't remember, can I? Well, someone who was there did it. I saw the state you were in New Year's Eve. You were hysterical because that arrogant brat terrified you. What do you expect me to think? Just go and lay some bricks or something. Can't you remember anything yet? I've told you, I can't. But your mum said you'd been to see this counsellor Diane told you about. Yeah, I did. Well, can't she help? It's more of a support thing. I've tried to remember, but nothing's come back at all. If it had been a total stranger, I might have felt better by now. But no one, just about everyone who was there. I feel like he's out there now, watching me, laughing at me. I keep thinking he might want to do it to me again. It's oh, horrible. Love. I feel like I don't want to step foot out the front door again. It's like I can't do anything but sit in here until they lock him up. Hi, babe. Hiya. You okay? Yeah. You sure? We stop asking all the time. There's no need to keep nipping back either. I'm not looking out for you, you know. Until the cat you did it, you gotta be careful. It could be Simba. Hasn't phoned, has he? No. Hello? All right. Yeah, just a sec. It's Pippa the Posho for you. Hey, Pip. Yeah? When? Not going away again, are you? Shh. Just for a week? Yeah, I'm going to ask him. Dad, can I go to Pippa's for the week? I don't know, babe. I'm tell you call her back. I can't. I've hardly seen you this holiday. Tell you phone her back. Pip? Yeah. That must have cost her from. It's a big game, Mike. Look, when my dad comes in, we demand I'm not supposed to be discussing the cleaning contract for the club. Right, that's if we can find time between keeping Bev and Auntie here happy. And where will that lead to? Disaster. Well, maybe you should take up the responsibilities with Bev. I mean, he did say he'd see Josh as his own. Been having another day bending off Megan, have you? That one needs put on rice. No, yeah, I think she's right. Oh, my God, you're such a hypocrite. Josh is your kid. Who are you to say what my dad should do? You never gave a toss about your responsibilities. Uh, Jack, the architect woman's inside. Hey, look who it is. 
How are you, Katie? Oh, you look brilliant. Oh, fantastic. Did you have a good time? Oh, really, really good. I'm just fed up about missing your big launch. So what's that? Jack hired a marquee for the launch party. How did it go? Oh, better than we thought. People are joining the health club like nobody's business. You'll have to come and have a look around. Well, give us a chance. Got two weeks washing to do. Mm, I'm all over the place myself today. So what's Sammy's new husband like, then? Oh, he's great. He's dead generous. I'm a good laugh. He owns the hotel we stayed in. Oh, he must be minted. Oh, she lands us on her feet, hasn't she? So what's he like, then, a real bronzed hunk? Well, I suppose he was once. He's 45. 45? I know. I was a bit shocked and all, but he's OK. He's mad about it. And she's as mad as ever. <laughs> well, listen, I'll have to catch up with you tonight. I'll see you later. Great. Ta -ra. So, how's Christmas for you two? Uh, well, New Year's was better. Oh, yeah? So what's the goss, then? Mm, well, Nicky Shadwick got raped in Mick Johnson's house. What? Joey! Uh, oh. oh, hi. I thought you were going to the shops. Yeah, I had. I forgot. Hell... What are you doing in a collar and tie? Uh, got to do a course at work. What course? Oh, some stupid health and safety thing. I tried to skip it, but head office says everyone's got to go. First I've heard of it. No, I told you about it before Christmas. No, don't remember. Yeah. Remember, I said I couldn't be bothered, but I was thinking about it. It might lead to a better job, more money. Right. Well, I won't say no to that. Listen, I'm on lit. I'll see you before I go. I don't know how long it's going to last. I don't know if they've got a coach laid on. These things take forever. Well, I'll see you when I see you then. Yeah. Bye. Bye. So, who else is going? Just me and Annabella. But she's away on holiday. How do you know she's going? Me and Pippa and Annabelle do everything together. I know, baby. You've been away most of the holidays. I mean, you spend more time at your mate's houses than you do here. I really want to go to Pippa's dad's. Where is it? It's near Preston. It's like a big farm. They've got goats and dogs and horses. Pippa's even got her own pony and a donkey. <laughs> How long have you been invited for? Just to be till we get back to school. Oh, I don't know, baby. Oh, go on, Dad. Everybody will think I'm a meff if I don't go. Well, what's wrong with spending the last bit of your holiday with your own family? Oh, it's boring. Oh, go on, Dad. Hello, Mr Johnson. Hi, come on. Thanks. Hi, Gemma. Yeah. I phoned to say I was returning the bedding. Thanks for your cooperation. All right. Have you uh, arrested anybody yet? Not today, no. Where should I put this? Yeah? Yeah. I don't want that back. I want it burnt. She wants to move bedrooms since it happened. She's still a bit, you know. Why don't me and you have a chat, Gemma? In your bedroom. Morning, Joey. What are you doing? Here? It's your court case today. I thought you'd need a bit of uh, model support, like. <laughs> I'll manage on my own. Ah, but uh, you'll have no licence when they're finished with you. You'll need a lift home. I said I'll manage. What sort of way is that to talk to a mate? Get in the car. <sighs> I'm trying to keep you off the dole queue, lad. <sighs> Wise choice, Joey. Sounds great. Dad doesn't like animals, though. Susan. You won't even let me have a hamster. Oh, not that again. Well, a hamster upstairs might help her reclaim her room after what's happened. But I think she knows now that it's always been her room, her private place, and that whatever happened is over now, eh, Gemma? Thanks. And I hope you don't think I'm interfering, but a week away in the country with her friends might be just the thing to take her mind off all this. She's really got to you, hasn't she? Can I go to Pippa's dad's, please? I suppose so. Ah, oh, yes. She reckons it's boring around here, you know. It is. You know what's going to happen, though, don't you? What? One of these days, you're going to have to retain the invitations. And then your mates will have to stay here when it's boring. So? Just remember. <laughs> Bear, you want to wear with you? Keep them lads of yours away from our Nicky. What do you mean? You know what happened to her at that party. That had nothing to do with my boys. So why did Joe Ryan start slagging our Nicky off at that launch party the other night? Why did he try to frighten her? 
But how are you on a bike? He grabbed hold of her and accused her of messing up his Christmas and God knows what else. What sort of a lad does that to a young girl? He's not what you're suggesting he is. How do you know? From what I hear, he's always on the move. How do you know what he gets up to when he's in Australia or wherever? Why is he always on the move? What's he running from? Don't you dare say that, our Ryan's no real. Neither are the other two. They've all been in for questioning and let go. Yeah, only because we haven't got enough evidence against him yet. Why did he threaten our Nicky? If he wasn't scared of something, he'd have left her alone. But he went out of his way to threaten her. Isn't that what rapists are all about, threatening and getting off on it? Leave me alone. Our Ryan had nothing to do with it. Yeah, well, let him come and tell me that. Then we'll see if he's innocent or not. Our Ryan's a good lad. It's not right, what you think? That's enough, Mr Shadwick. That Ryan needs taken in again. I'll take you in if there's any more disturbances. You what? Don't threaten me when you can't catch the scumbag or rape my daughter. Never mind hassling me. That Ryan needs leaning on. Why aren't you doing anything? Why haven't you got to the bottom of it yet? You're bloody useless, the lot of you. One more word and I'll arrest you, Mr Shadwick. Oh, I what for? Telling the truth? Go back to your house now. I mean it. He's wrong. Oh, Ryan wouldn't do anything like that. Oh, and another thing. You know the repairs on your house? Forget about it. Get some other mug to do them. Let us know if there's any more trouble. That, uh, that son of yours not turning up today? I can handle this on my own, you know, Benny. I'm not having a mace of mine on his own when he's in front of the beak. I can see you're nervous. I just wish you'd leave it to me to keep all this quiet. I don't need your help. You're gonna need all the help you can get, mate. After all, your livelihood's at stake here. If they find out, you're off the road. How about a coffee? Cheers. Oh, wait, uh, hang on. The machine only takes 20s, and I haven't got any. Should do nicely. Drugging and then doing it. Oh, that's gross. Who do you think did it? I've only heard the rumours. Some say that Joey Musgrove did it. Well, he was drunk and gate crashed the party. But he's been let out after questioning. I can't see him doing that. Mm. See, it might have been one of the university crowd who were there. Lindsay Carkill, even. Oh, yeah. Anyway, she caught one of the students who were there trying to sell pills at the Millennium launch. Yeah? Mm. Horrible he was. <laughs> Rachel Jordash? Yeah? DC Diane Nichols, Manor Park CID. Oh, God, is it about Sinbad? Sorry? A friend of mine, he hasn't come back from a trip to Bristol. I'm a bit worried. Oh, I see. Actually, I wanted to talk to you about a party at Number 5 Brookside Close on December 23rd. I believe you were present? Yeah, I was, but I don't know anything about what happened. Perhaps not, but I'd like you to come down to the station and tell me what you do know. Well, can't we do it here? Yeah, you can use the office if you want. I'm sorry, but I'd prefer it if you came in. But I don't know anything. It won't take long, Rachel, I promise you. Come on, Rachel, I'll come with you. If that's OK? Yeah, but you can't be there at the interview. Come on, Rachel, be all right. Your direct debit won't be activated until the leisure club's officially open. If you change your mind before then, please let me know. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Hiya. Oh, hi. We've beaten our own daily record in applications to the health club. Oh. Yeah. And look at this. It's a really good write-up. Interviews with people who were here on New Year's Eve and everything. Oh, wow. Whole page just for us. Why, it's worth thousands of pounds in free publicity. It's all in the PR budget. Oh. But we've got to keep building on this. No matter how much publicity we get, people won't be sticking with us if we don't get all the facilities finished on time. Lindsay, this is the list of staff waiting on jobs. You could just let them know the score that we still want them, but explain the delay on the building work. Just keep them on the boil, really. Yeah, sure. And I'll keep on the back of Snail and Tortoise, the builders. <laughs> oh. Even Megan's joined up. Has she? Yes, yeah, so I told you to go have a look around, if that's all right. Oh, well, is she still here? Uh, yeah. Joseph Musgrove, you are charged that on the 13th of November 1998, in the borough of Nosley, you drove a motor vehicle having consumed excess alcohol, contrary to Section 51A of the Road Traffic Offenders Act 1988. How do you plead? Guilty. And I don't want you sticking your nose in. It's my family you're talking about. It's my mum I'm concerned about. She's the only family I've got, so I was I'm concerned. I don't want to ruin life, money, and your dad. 
And I don't want you pushing him towards Bev McLaughlin. He doesn't need the likes of her. He needs someone like Anthea, someone his own age, someone that he can get along with. A nursemaid, you mean? He's already had three heart attacks. I'm not having my mum running around after some invalid. Um, my dad's fine. And they've known each other since they were kids, and your mum wants him because she told me. But it's wrong. I mean, just because he met my mum doesn't mean he shouldn't care for Bev and his little boy. He shouldn't be messing my mum around. He should be facing up to his responsibilities. Um, don't talk about my dad's responsibilities. What about Anthea? She had you to me dad and didn't even tell him. And she went off and married someone else. I just know she'd be better off out of it. I mean, why should she marry someone who should be looking after his little boy? Megan, you don't know what you're talking about. Do you think you should just forget about Josh then? Josh has got nothing to do with me dad. He's not even his kid. He's got no responsibilities for that kid, none at all. Josh is our Mike's son. Mr. Musgrove, you've pleaded guilty to a charge of drinking and driving. The court takes a dim view of this at any time, but the fact that you were driving a private hire vehicle at the time could have put passengers at grave risk. My sentence must reflect this. You are fined the sum of 500 pounds and disqualified from driving for 18 months. Are you absolutely sure they were the only men at the party? Yeah, I think so. Well, no, there are a few there that no one seemed to know. Gate crashers? Yeah. Did you see anyone with drugs, or did anyone talk about drugs in your presence? No. Do you know who helped Mickey Shadwick upstairs? Um, yeah, Mike did, Mike Dixon. Was he alone with her in Gemma's bedroom? Uh, I don't know, but he wouldn't do anything, not Mike. Later on, did you go upstairs to the bedroom at all to check on Nicky, anything like that? No. I forgot about her, I suppose. When did you go upstairs? I didn't. You sure? Yeah. That's not completely true, is it, Rachel? I didn't. Well, Michael Dixon tells a different story. Well, what did he tell you? That you and he went to the bedroom for sex. What are you talking about? We didn't do anything. I'm not here to question your morality, Rachel. I just need to check certain things. <laughs> When you went upstairs with Mr. Dixon for whatever reason, <laughs> did you see anyone go in or out of Gemma's bedroom? I shouldn't have said that. It's not fair. Rachel, I'm not going to ask you any more questions about that. <sighs> How am I supposed to manage 25 quid a week if I go down? Of course you can. There was no reporters in course. Outside of here, knows you've been banned. Just you and me. What about the police? What did you say to me? How often have you been pulled on your milk float or in your cab, eh? Never. Except when you've been drinking. So forget drinking and keep working. Look, just stay away from me, all right? I've had enough. Oh, no, Joey. I still need my settle open each week. In fact, I want it tonight. You can bring it to my local before closing time. Oh, just get lost. It's just you and me know that you're banned, Joey. Do you want to keep your jobs or not? Right, bring that settle tonight. Pear tree, 11 o'clock. I suppose you'd be wanting a lift home, mate. I'll get a cab if it's all the same to you. Well, I'm not having him. And I'm definitely not. Jackie, we need a decision on this. What? I don't want Luke Musgrove working anywhere near me. And I don't want him in the restaurant either. Hang on, what's the problem? I took him on because he's fully qualified. He's got all of his certificates, including his life-saving. Um, He'll be in the pool. He won't be anywhere near the restaurant. Or Jackie, the I don't care what he's got. I don't want him working here. Well, why not? What's up with him? I don't like him. <sighs> well, that's no excuse for sacking someone. I'm sorry, Jackie, but one of the conditions of this relationship is that I recruit my own staff, and I'm not employing a lout like that. And if Susanna won't have him, sack him. He hasn't even started yet, and you want me to sack him? I don't care what you do. Just tell him you've changed your mind. I don't want him working anywhere near me. <sighs> for God's sake, Lindsay, what is wrong with him? I don't know. When my dad was suspended from school, it was him and his stupid little brother who were shouting at him in the street. All right. But well, so are a few people. Do you want me and my cash to walk out of here? That's how strong I feel. All right, all right. We're gonna fall out over it. I'll go along with you. I just hope she isn't gonna question every decision I make. Are you ready to carry on? 
I won't be asking any more about you and Mr. Dixon, okay? Have you ever seen this before? Have a good look. It was found in the bed where the assault took place. It might be off a shirt or it might be off a pair of boxer shorts. Do you recognize it? Rachel? Sorry? Do you recognize the button? No. You're absolutely sure it could be important? No, I don't recognize it. Let's get this down on paper, shall we? Hiya. Hiya. Um, what happened to me, Dad? I thought you were going to tell him to come over to the club. He said he was too busy to see you. He what? If anyone's busier to me and he's messing me about, where's Rachel? Yeah, she's down the cop shop about the party in Nicky's shed. Oh, no, Mike. Why didn't you tell me? She'll hate that. Jackie, it's only routine. And she's gone with Katie anyway. Oh, well, that's OK, then. So where is my dad? He's taking Bevan out just to see some panto. Probably some sad substar prancing around on a pair of tights. See, it's happening already. She's got him doing exactly what she wants. Jackie, he wanted to see Josh. She wanted him to visit, you mean? And, um. I've told Megan about Josh. What? Well, I told her it was real, Dad is. Oh, wait, what if Anthea finds out what she's gonna think? Mike, she'll know that Bev hasn't got a leg to stand on with me dad. So she's no need to worry about taking her father away from her son now, has she? And she just might get Bev to slinger her. Hi, James. Hiya. I seen my phone. No, but Annabella's mum did. What's this for Annie? Did she want me? Come by, but she want you. I. Yeah. Thought she was still in bar by this, huh? Yes, she is. Must have cost the bomb on the phone. So what did she want? She was just trying to see if I was still going with Annabella to Pippa's dad's. Pippa phoned the hotel over there. I don't believe these friends are yours. You mean if I even phone anybody in Liverpool? <sighs> So, uh, is Mrs. Fairley and her family having a good time? Yeah, she said they were. Ah, oh, right. She put Annabella on the phone to talk to me. She's not too happy, Dad. Yeah, why? The dad's not coming back with them. He's got to go on another plane to some oil field place. Might not be back for ages. Mightn't be back till after Easter. It's not terrible for Miss Fairley and Annabella. Yeah. Terrible. Was ranting at me on her own doorstep, accusing our Ryan of raping his daughter. The policewoman warned him, didn't she? Oh, yeah, but Andy told me what we could do to the work to our house. Well, we'll have to sort something else. You mean I'll have to get the lads to sort something else? If that's what it takes. And it wasn't me who caused a song and dance about things at that launch party, was it now? No, not that one. If your precious Ryan or any of them could control themselves, we wouldn't be in this mess. God, Joy, you won't give him credit for anything, will you? How long are you going to bear a grudge against your own son? That Greg Shadwick's turning our name into mud and you won't do a thing about it. Why not? I'll see you later. Where are you going? Out on the cab. No, not until you put him straight about our Ryan. We need the money. Joey! I wish I'd never gone near him. She brought it all back to me. About Christian? No, me dad. How? Oh? Being in that police station. It's where I went after me dad died. Oh, it was even the same room that they asked me all the questions about what my dad did to me in bed and everything. Oh, it was horrible. I like going through it all over again. Rich. It's all Mike's fault. He shouldn't have told him anything. Why did he have to lie and say we slept together? I can't believe he said that. You have to speak to Mike. He's the only one who can answer that. I know it was horrible, but you have to try and forget it. You've made your statement and it's all over now. It's not. The policewoman showed me a button they found in Gemma's bed. She said they thought the rapist left it there. Well, oh, I wasn't sure at first and... Then I remembered spilling some red wine over Luke Musgrove's new shirt at the party. I put it in the cleaners room the next day, but... I've only just picked it up. Mm. 
It's got a button missing. Well, it could have come off in the cleaners. The cleaners put a note in. Button missing when left for cleaning. I know it's the same button that's missing off the shirt. I just know it. Luke Musgrove must be the rapist. If you've been affected by rape, whatever the circumstances, there's a Channel 4 information line with sources of support, including specific help for victims of drug rape. The number to ring is 08456 102 288. Lines are open from now until the end of January, and calls cost no more than 20 pence. That's 08456 102 288. Next here on 4, the bombers that played a vital role in World War II in classic aircraft. I was going to say be uh, half an hour ago. I think I'm doing the right thing. If you think that there's even a chance that Luke Musgrove raped Nikki, you've got to say so. But what if I'm wrong? That's how this lot to decide. Hey, a new year, a new term. I tell you, I can't wait to get there. Oh, must be we'll drag going back to work after Christmas. Not me. I see it as a new challenge. And I don't mean picking up from where I left off. I mean letting those kids know that there's loads of opportunities for them out there if they just look hard enough. Yeah, well, you make sure your New Year's resolution is to keep out of trouble, eh? We don't want any repeats of that Susan Clark business. Hey, listen, from now on, I'm going to play things by the book. I had his arm again. No, you just missed him. Um, do you want a coffee or something? Uh, no, you're alright. I've got work to do. Suit yourself. Oh, well, if you see your dad around, will you tell him I want a word? Um, Wiley? Well, I'm going to see Josh tomorrow and I want to take him something. He could do with a new jacket, so I thought me and your dad could pop into town and get him one. Well, my dad's run off his feet with his own business, you know, like he's working too. Well, he did say to tell him if Josh needed anything. You don't mind spending a few quid on him, otherwise he wouldn't offer. Yeah, well, just remember that my dad's not made his money, so go easy, eh? You all right? Oh, I hate being here. Reminds me of my dad and all that. It's funny, isn't it? I he tried to forget things, but it only takes someone to say something or to walk into somewhere like this. We've spent ages here, going over and over everything. Well, me, Mum and Beth did. I suppose it was only then that I started to realise what my dad had done. Beth told me she killed him because he... because he raped me. I didn't believe it, really, not my dad. I like you reading the papers. Look, I know this is a stupid thing to say, but... I've got to try and put it all behind you. I just can't forget it, though. Yeah, well, Nikki Shadwick can't either, can she? That's why you've got no choice. Morning. Sorry for keeping you. Um, it's got a button missing, the same as the one I was shown. I appreciate you bringing it in. I'll just get this sent to the forensic people, then I'll be back to take another statement off you. OK. I've done the right thing, you know. I hope so. Hiya. Hiya. You have a nice holiday? Yeah, it was great. The hotel, we stayed in had four pools. So wonder she hasn't got fins the amount of time she's been swimming. Do you still want to get yourself some limo from the fridge? Yeah. And, uh, what about you? Have you had a nice time? It was a nice break. There were certain things missing. But the same round here, too. I thought we could do some catching up later. I could drop the girls off at the station and they could get the train over to Pippa's. 
On their own? Well, Lucinda said they'd be picked up at the other end by Pippa's father. And they are old enough to get on a train. Mm, yeah, I suppose so. And it means I'll be able to slip back here for an hour or so. Yeah, that sounds good. That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't know when it'll be finished. All you keep telling me is a few months. But, but you can't keep dragging on and on. I'm running out of what little I have left over from the sale of grants. I need to start generating some income. Well, can't you chase Max for some? Oh, oh I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking. Oh, here's another expense I've just taken on. I know, I know, and I'm sorry. But I can't get much more done myself until he sorts out this foundation problem. So what you're saying is that after taking our money, you can't tell us when we can open up for business. And I've said I'm sorry, and I've told you that I am doing my best. Well, I gave up my job next door to concentrate. That was your choice. But at least you've got the income from Peter Salo. Oh, Salo. Where is he, anyway? He had to pop into town. Obviously, got held up. <sighs> Obviously. Hello? Yeah, hang on. It's the builder. Hey, Clark, you're in charge of getting all those props back in the store cupboard, OK? Yes, OK. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Right. They've swore to me that there'll be no more delays. I've heard that one before. Well, hopefully he'll mean it this time. But the big question still remains, what am I going to do about cash in the meantime? He really broke? Well, not broke, but not far from it. Perhaps I was too hasty in sending grants. Oh, Susanna, I'm really sorry. I never knew this was going to happen. So what about the cash we gave you up front? Can we have that back? Or oh, perhaps just a part of it? I wish I could. But I'm up to me neck in it and all. Hiya. Hiya. Is Jack back yet? No, I haven't seen him. What's this, then? High-powered business meeting? Yeah, something like that. Mm. Wish I had time to sit around all day drinking coffee. Well, I think there's a bit more to it than that, Beth. Discussing your swanky new club, are you? Yes, that's right. Um, this is a private meeting, actually. So, this swanky new club is going nowhere, basically. It's just a delay. No, it's not. It's another delay. And as far as I'm concerned, it better be the last one. Oh, what? Oh, I want me money back. All of it. You'll be lucky. Aren't you listening to me? I'm up to here myself. So whatever money you've given to me has already gone to the stupid builders. This place hasn't, though. And have you forgotten who owns this place? Your ex-lover? It's no good looking at me like that, Lindsay. Because you've all been screwed by Barry Grant at some time. Uh, actually, I haven't. <sighs> Look, I only get half the profits for managing this place. That's why I want that place open over there, too. At least I'll own a bit of that. I am just as gutted as you are, and I am doing my best, honest. OK. So when will we know for definite what's happening? They've said at the end of the week. Oh, again. Yes, again. OK. Right, I'll see you later. Better go and see what Peace is up to. Mm. And I think I'd better go too. Book tree has been waiting for ages. Thanks for that. It was winding up into a right old slanger, wasn't it? Yes. Well, we're all disappointed with the lack of progress. I said I'd get it cleaned after I spilt the wine over him. Does Luke Musgrove know you've got the shit? Um, I'm not sure. Well, he must do, if he gave it to you. Well, I got it off his brother, Ryan. Why not from Luke? He just wasn't in when I called Ryan to get it. When was that? Day after the party, Christmas Eve. I went round and collected it, and then I dropped it in the cleaners on my way to Bristol. Do you know if there was a button missing from the shirt at the party? You mean, was it missing before the party? I haven't a clue. Does he know there was a button missing? I don't know. If he does ask for the shirt before we've got the forensic results back, could you tell him you haven't collected it yet? So do you think it was him? Too early to say. Hiya. Um, what can I do for you? Came to save you fancy lunch. I wish I could, but I've got too much on. Things are manic at the moment, and I've got to go over the club again. 
It's all right, Sal. Give me one ring, see if she fancies it. Well, I'll tell you what. I've got to eat, so, um, I'll be back in about half an hour. But you have time? I'll make the time. Great. See you later, then. Yeah. Oh, I really didn't think I'd keep you waiting so long. I'm sorry. It's no problem, honestly. I was so impressed with your references. Thanks. There's just one thing I'm not quite clear about, though. Oh, yeah, what? Well, there seems to be a gap that isn't accounted for at the end of 1996. When I was in America? Hmm. Well, you said in your interview that you came home due to your father's illness, but it says here that you left due to the illness of the child's father. Oh, you must have misheard me. I said the baby's child. Oh, really? Yeah, he was so ill. He had to get the baby's grandparents to come and stay. And so we decided it'd be better if I left, as there really wasn't any room for me. And to be honest, I was starting to feel a bit homesick by then anyway. Oh, I see. Well, it is a long way from home. Fancy working abroad again? No. I've tried it. Been there, done that. <laughs> well, seeing as your trial period has been such a success and your references are so good, the job is permanently yours, if you want it. Honestly? Yes. Starting... Well, continuing from now. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> What is it? What's up? Behind the screens at the back of the stage there. Our contestants have to guess their identity. They get in clues, but some clues are purposely missing. It's Susan. The more clues you get right, the Susan Clark. And of course, get closer to identifying the celebrity. She's dead. And also Anybody in? Nope. Just me. Mm. 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 So you miss me then? That was just your Christmas kiss. I'll show you how much I missed you now. Mm. Mm. Oh. I just had this really good session with the kids. Reenacting the Battle of Hastings. And on the way out. Headmaster's having a special assembly for her tomorrow. The word soon went round. Some of the kids were crying. Some of them didn't even seem surprised. Karen sent me home. I said I'd stay, but she seemed to think it'd be better if I took the rest of the day off, you know. But well, she's right. Has anyone seen or heard anything from Peter this morning? No, love, I'm sorry. What's the matter, Dad? Susan Clark's been found dead in some derelict house. Was it drugs? She'd overdosed. Another one wasted. Right, come on, Kaz. Let's do you some lunch. Listen, Law, you did all you could do to help her, you know. Did I? I don't think so, Jack. All right, I stuck my neck out for her, but it wasn't enough, was it? Ah, what a bloody waste. Keep you in touch with what's going on. Thanks again. Thanks. 
Happy life, right, then. Mm, I'm just relieved it's over. Well, this part at least. I've still got to face Luke. Well, don't worry about him. I can't help it. If he is the rapist, then what's he going to do if he finds out I help the police catch him? Let's just wait and see what happens. It might not even be him. Yeah, you're right. Well, I can't believe it is Luke. Then again, I never would have thought Mike had lied to the police about me and him the way he did. Well, at least someone else you've got to face. Yeah, I know, but I'm ready for him. I just say, uh, I wanted to apologise for having a go at you and your dad. Well, my dad as well now, I suppose. Yeah, well, it can't have been easy having a new family, especially our family and all our problems dropped on you. The biggest thing was finding out what a lying cow my mother is. Yeah, well, she meant well, and she did it for all the right reasons. I think I've got my head around that now. Almost. And snug on my own brother. <laughs> <laughs> but what about you? Found out you had a baby sister. Well, I was like you. In a state of shock about what my dad had been up to. It's a bit of a stud in his own way, isn't he? <laughs> it more like a Randy old bull. <laughs> but this is weird, isn't it? I mean, a few weeks ago we didn't even know each other existed. And I was sitting here talking about our dad. Well, I'm talking about my mum, really. Yeah, well. You know what I mean. And if she's happy with him, then what about this Bev one? I mean, I know I haven't exactly been cheering for my mum and your dad getting back together, but her being an arm making me feel miserable. Well, I don't think she's got too much to worry about. Bev is just a gold digger. There's only one thing she's after, and that's my dad's money. Does he realise it? Well, if he doesn't, he soon will. I think he just feels a sense of responsibility towards Josh. Otherwise, he wouldn't give Bev the time of day. Even though he isn't Josh's real father? I know it's mad, isn't it? But that's what my dad's like. Big on family, isn't my dad? I suppose I got him all wrong, didn't I? Well, I'm not saying he's some big saint. But deep down, he's a good person. And I reckon you'll really like him when you get to know him properly. I think Bev doesn't spoil things between me mum and him first. Calm down, darling. It's all right. Look. The car's parked round the corner. You go and wait there for me and, and we can talk. How could you? Here? How could you? Annabella, do as you're told. I haven't done anything wrong. You have. Please. I'll explain everything later. Don't bother. We've done it in PSE. I'll call you. Look, Gemma, I can explain. Trains were cancelled, so instead of ringing you, we thought we'd make our own way back. Look, I know it doesn't seem right, me and Annabella's man, but, well, we like each other a lot. Thought you'd be mad at us, but Annabella said it would show how responsible we are, that we're old enough and we can look after ourselves. I know you can. I hope you'll understand. I don't want to know about it. Well, flesh ones. Yeah, not for me, thanks. I should be going. Yeah, and I've got things to do. Oh, yeah. How did it go? With the... What have you been saying about me to the police? Well, nothing. Well, then how come they've got the idea that we slept together at the party? Oh, come on, Rach, not my way. Bragging, were you? Trying to make yourself out to be some kind of big stud? Rach, it wasn't like that, honestly. I'll see ya. Yeah, I'll see ya. Oh, what's he supposed to have said? Your big mouth brother has said that we had sex. I've never been so embarrassed in my life. Oh, I just told them that we went into the room together. They just assumed the rest. But you didn't put them straight. They never gave me a chance. Oh, yeah, you were happy to let them think it more like. Make you feel good, did it? Rachel, I swear I didn't do it on purpose. Look, the last thing I'd want to do is embarrass you. Yeah, well, I wish it was only embarrassment. The room they interviewed me was the same when they questioned me about my dad. Rachel, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you. Yeah, well, you should have thought about that when you were letting the police know that I was just another one of your conquests. Thanks, Mike. Doesn't it even bother you two that the girl we threw out of our house is dead now? Or that the money you sent her off with could have paid for the gear that killed her? Oh, don't talk soft, Dad. She hadn't been here two minutes since she tried to pinch the watch that I bought for Peter. That's why I gave her the money. She was that far gone that she'd steal from you. God knows what she would have done over Christmas. But she came round to see if I could help her. She came here because she knew you were a soft touch. OK, I know she had her problems. They all have the problems in some shape or form. But that's what gets them into it in the first place. And what problems did your brother have? How long have you got? What? 
Mum, he was always off his head, even when he wasn't on drugs. I I'm not saying he needed a Z-Red or a psycho report, but... Well, he felt he was a loser. He had nothing, and he was going nowhere. Yeah. Which was all down to me. Some role model I was. Jimmy, don't. It wasn't you, Dad. It was... <sighs> I don't know, everything. Who he was, where he was. All right. Who we were. It all contributed to it. But no one made him do what he did. Except himself. And seeing his old fella finally making some real money out of selling drugs. And so did I, but I never got into drugs. Oh, no, just gangsters and guns. <sighs> Whatever made our Jimmy do what he did was up here, Dad. And the same as Susan, the same as all of them, they all have some problem. Uh, you did your best. But the only people who can help smack heads are themselves. They've got to want to pack it in. And what about me? I would never have got off it without help. You came through it because you wanted to stop. And even our Jimmy, I, I mean, I loved him and all that, but he was never going to pack it in. He wasn't strong enough. You were. I don't know. But if I'd have done more, she might still be alive. You want to know one thing? I will never turn my back on a kid again. If any of them need my help, they're gonna get it. No matter what the cost. So, uh, what's all this about Peter, then? Oh, him. Um, I don't know, he was... He was meant to have been in the salon this morning, but no one's seen him. It's not like him. No. I think we should talk about you and me, Dad, among other things. Oh, I? Like what? Bev, I know full well what you're after. And what would that be? Money. You're trying to get as much out of me, Dad, as you can. Money might mean everything to you. With your little business empire built on Barry Grant's dodgy cash, but it doesn't mean that much to me. Oh, I admit, when I get Josh back, I want him looked after properly. But I'm not greedy. Just want security for the two of us, and I think we're entitled to it. Oh, entitled, are you? Oh, well, let's hear it. If you've forgotten how your father threw me on the streets, how else would I have ended up homeless with Josh in care? That's why I'm entitled. Oh, I see. So it's all my dad's fault, is it? And I, I don't suppose the idea of looking after yourself occurred to you, did it? Oh, I tried. We just don't all sell our kids to save the asshole, you know. So what's your game then, Bev? Playing with dad's conscience? What's it got to do with you anyway? Can't your dad make his own mind up about what he does with his own money? Yeah, but I know that he's a soft touch when it comes to Josh. And I know you know that and all. He's a kind, caring man. Look, we don't have to fall out over this. I know what a good man your dad is. I know how big he is on family and all that. And, well, whether you like it or not, I do still really love him. <sighs> despite everything that's gone on. If I'd known how things were going to work out with Jackie Cork, I'd have been back sooner. Yeah. But he's involved with Anthea now. And being a family man to his new daughter... He'd be much happier with me. Well, he obviously disagrees. Otherwise, he wouldn't be thinking of getting engaged to Anthea. I mean, I can't remember him ever putting a ring on your finger. You can say or do whatever you want, but you're not going to get rid of me. Your dad wants me here. He cares for me. Bev, don't kid yourself. He just feels sorry for you. That's what you think. We're as close as ever. Now you're just imagining things. Did I imagine us rolling around in bed together? Oh, yeah, just like old times. No, no, you're just making it up. It's true. Ask him if you want. He really does still care. Well, if it is true, you must have offered it up to him on a plate. Just like he did when you split up his and me mum's marriage. Why can't you just accept that he still loves me? What I won't accept is you ruining things for him again. You won't stop me getting what I want. What? Fleecing him? Well, I'll tell you what, Bev. I'm going to make sure you don't get one penny. I'm not just after his money, you stupid cow. I'm after him as well. I'm going to make sure I get him. <sighs> on the trail of the last-minute deal and keeping a romantic tryst in Turkey, next on Paul Davina McCall, here's more tales of real holidays. Mm -hmm.